Have you seen all the research that everyone is pretty much promoting Finnish saunas and you have to have a traditional sauna that gets to at least 170, 180, some people say 200 in excess of 220 degrees Fahrenheit in order to experience the 40% reduction in all cause mortality and in order to experience all the sauna benefits. What if, I'm going to be a little controversial today, but what if all these threads that you search, because when you look for this information, it's really not clear. Is infrared better than traditional? Is traditional better than infrared? Are both of them okay? Do both of them have merit? Is there a percentage of benefit that's better in one versus, you know, you're getting 80% of the benefits of a traditional sauna in infrared or vice versa? I would like to provide you with a couple of resources. I've been working on this for over a year now, experimenting. If you're not in my Facebook group, you should get in there because there's a lot of top secret stuff that we don't publish on YouTube that's happening as ongoing tests in there. So if you go to Facebook, search for the Certified Sauna Community, join that, it's free. Give us a couple days. We monitor everyone who joins to make sure that there's no bots or spammers or anything crazy in there. Um, but what I'd like to provide you with is about a year ago, I started out making a hybrid sauna. And that is one thing that no one's talking about. If you search Reddit, if you search anywhere where there's people that are doing biohacking on an ongoing basis or have blogs or forums or YouTube videos and so on and so forth, you'll find that a lot of people will say that an infrared sauna is not a true sauna, right? If it doesn't have you know, hot rocks, if you're not actually uh, increasing the moisture ratio in the sauna or the humidity, or if you're not ladling the water on the rocks, or you're not doing this, you're not doing that. You know, I understand that. I respect that. I've used all types of saunas in my life, and infrared has been a game changer for me. It's really allowed me to put a sauna anywhere I am, whether I'm in an apartment, a leased place, uh, forever home, traveling, they have portable versions, and so on and so forth. And I think a lot of these posts, a lot of the people that say infrared's not a true sauna, is really short-sighted. While I respect their opinion and I respect their experience, they're also missing two pieces of the puzzle that will be a game changer for you. And I've been testing this myself. Before we go into the details of infrared versus traditional, I wanna show you this $200 or less traditional finished sauna heater that I purchased. I bought this on Amazon, it's 120 volt. It's only a two kilowatt unit. Um, you can put this in any infrared sauna and make your infrared sauna a hybrid a traditional sauna and a, a infrared sauna. And you can run both at the same time, which is severely lacking in the marketplace. A lot of companies have hybrid saunas, but they don't allow you to run the traditional heater and the infrared at the same time. The reason for that is they'd have to have uh, separate power supplies for both. Most people can't hire an electrician and create uh, the type of power required to run both of those. Uh, so they don't, you know, they don't actually do it, but you can build one for very cheap. And my point is you can take a couple hundred bucks, add some 12 gauge wire, uh, if you have to, another circuit. If it's a large sauna, I'd recommend getting a larger than two kilowatt uh, finished sauna heater, dry electric sauna heater. I just purchased this because it was in a, a one or a two person sauna. And that was more than enough to take the internal cabin temperature to super hot. I mean, 170, 180 degrees like that. I mean, it was quick. If you have a four or five person sauna or something that's large or a yoga sauna, you might want to use a four or five or six kilowatt heater to speed that heat time up. Now, why do I say that it's short-sighted, that Redditors and you know people that are proponents of Finnish style sauna say that infrared is not a real sauna? The reason that I think it's short-sighted is because infrared can allow people to get healing heat therapy in their home and plug it into a circuit that if you can run a vacuum cleaner in your house, you can power an infrared sauna. There's tons of infrared saunas. I have a bunch of them behind me in the other room, in my office, everywhere. And we test these things over and over and over. And for somebody that uh, doesn't want to hire an electrician, doesn't want to have an outdoor sauna, doesn't want to burn wood or have, you know, some crazy 240 volt service put in and, you know, steam, just deal with all this stuff, which is partly me. I mean, I'm a customer of these things first. Yes, I'm a promoter. And, and yes, I believe in this technology and I think everyone should have it because the, the evidence is there. And so if you're in the camp, the, the first reason I think it's short-sighted is that you can take any infrared sauna and turn it into a traditional sauna for cheap, a couple hundred bucks. I've done this myself. It's been in the Facebook group. I've tested it. We put thermometers in there. We do everything that you have to do in order to make a true hybrid sauna. And it works so well. You can leave the infrared heaters off and only run the traditional sauna heater and voila, you have a traditional sauna. And it's that simple. The reverse of that you cannot do. You can't take a traditional sauna and outfit it with a computer controlled system that has infrared heaters that are gonna deliver radiant heat directly to the body that penetrates deep into the tissues on a controlled thermostat for $200. It's just not possible. 
And so I am always a proponent of infrared first. If for some reason you believe in order to make heat shock proteins that the air temperature in the sauna has to be a certain degree, then have at it. I mean, we have ways to do that. I've been testing this now for months and months. And I still, even with all of this available to me, I can use any sauna that I want. I can make any sauna that I have, a traditional sauna. We developed a portable little plug-in style finished sauna heater. I'll show you pictures of it here. Uh, I built it in my garage, in my little garage gym. And I can take this, plug it into a wall, and put it in any single sauna that I have and make that sauna perform like a traditional sauna. Now, we can get the temperature as hot as you want until you can't stand it. You know, I think the second thing that's short-sighted about that is you shouldn't really be heat stressing the system that much for everyone, right? You can get benefits of heat therapy without doing 240 degrees. I mean, it's ridiculous to try to enforce people to do this, is the method of heat delivery, right? You're comparing infrared all the time. You're saying, oh, well, infrared sauna only gets up to this temperature. Well, newsflash, guys, if you actually test the equipment like we do in the Facebook group or like I do in my office or we test infrared heaters with spectrometers and find out which companies are lying about near-infrared, mid-infrared, far-infrared, red light therapy, photobiomodulation, all of the above, you'll find out really quickly that the method of heat delivery from radiant heat is heating the tissues directly right? It's not working on air temperature. It's not a convection sauna. A traditional sauna is a convection sauna. So it relies on temperature to transfer heat and heat is a poor conductor, right? And so it takes a while to preheat. It takes a long time to heat the body up and it takes, you know, it's questionable whether the sweat, some people refer to studies and say that the sweat in infrared is like less portion of water. It's more slimy. It's more of a sebaceous sweat. You have more ability to sweat out, you know, toxins and, and pesticides and different compounds and all that. I'm not here to debate on whether or not that portion is true. What I'm here to show you, because we've repeated this over and over and over, and it works really, really well, it works like gangbusters for people, is you have to understand lipolysis. You have to understand how radiant heat facilitates the breakdown of compounds that are stored in fat cells. And if you understand that, there's two parts to this. Number one... If you test an infrared sauna, all the sauna companies are lying. Every single one of them, even the ones that I promote. Why do I still promote them? Because it's an uphill battle to overcome the terminology that's used in the industry about temperature. And so I just go along with it. And the saunas still work. Whether or not they operate at the at advertised temperature or not is irrelevant. Here's why. An infrared sauna has a calibrated thermostat. Every single one of them. Based on the length of time that you've been in front of the radiant heaters, the thermostat is calibrated to a temperature that they're trying to guesstimate your body would experience if you were in a temperature-controlled hotbox. Is there some convection taking place in an infrared sauna? Absolutely. The cabin is heating up over time. Is that the primary method of heat delivery that's actually causing you to have a hyperthermic response? No. The radiant heat that's per, per, you know penetrating your tissues is actually driving <clears throat> your core temperature up and making you sweat, making you have a heat, heat therapy experience. Now, why is this important to understand and go deep into? Because once you understand that radiant heat is penetrating the tissues and allowing this lipolysis process to facilitate even faster if you use compounds like niacin, there's a reason why you know the old Hubbard protocol has been sped up by Dr. Root and all these other people who do these advanced detox protocols. There's a reason why they don't have to stay in the sauna as long and they get the same results in an infrared. And part of that is due to the nature of how toxins and compounds are stored in the cell and what happens when they're put under radiant heat. You're heating the body up with direct heat rather than just air temperature. And, and newsflash, none of the saunas that are, say, 160 degrees on the screen are actually 160 degree air temperature when you measure them. I've tested this myself. I hate to be the bearer of bad news because a lot of people are going to say, oh, Matt, well, you said it goes to this temperature. Yeah, I just go along with the vernacular or the, the terminology or the verbiage because it's too much of an uphill battle, right? I put together videos like this for the advanced user where you can say, hey, okay, let's recognize what the methods of heat delivery are. What's actually taking place inside the cabin and what's the, the body response? Because that's what's critical. All the Finnish studies that talk about air temperature and everything else, one of the crucial metrics that should be a control across all the studies in order to uh, familiarize yourself with an actual benefit is core temp. You'd have to do this with a rectal thermometer. There's no other way that you could accurately measure. And you would want that control to be um, uh, basically industry-wide. <clears throat> when they do these studies, you should be monitoring, okay, this controls this, this affects that. 
yada, yada, yada. That's kind of missing. And so if you had those variables to compare infrared to uh, finish, I think you'd find that over <clears throat> a reasonable amount of time, you actually get a core temperature increase with infrared. However, if you're in the camp, all this said, all this to say, if that's not enough for you and you truly believe in this, you should still get an infrared sauna. I'm of the belief that you should still use an infrared sauna. Just outfit it with a traditional sauna heater if that's your jam. There's nothing wrong with that. It's very cheap. Um, we're, we've been doing it left and right. If you have an infrared sauna that's in a cold basement, a cold garage, if you have an older infrared sauna that doesn't have a great heater layout, like the company just doesn't have a lot of far infrared saturation on the body in order for it to perform well, you don't have to throw it out. There's tons of experiments in the Facebook group. I add heat lamps to um, force the preheat time to be much faster. You can add a traditional sauna heater uh, to any infrared, like I've been saying over and over and over. We've been keeping this under wraps in the Facebook group uh, in order to try this and make sure that it works and make sure that people are having and good results with it. And they really are. And so for a few hundred dollars more, you could get a six kilowatt heater. If you want to, you can make this thing so blazing hot. It doesn't matter you know, what you started with. It's going to be like basically setting jet fuel on, <laughs> on fire. And uh, it'll operate at any temperature for any duration that you like. And I think a lot of people will be really surprised by the results. And they'll also get the expedited detox. They'll get the deep penetration of the infrared. And then if you want the high heat, just the click of a button. So I hope that helps. If you're interested in infrared saunas, obviously you can check out the certified sauna list at certifiedsaunas.com. But what I'd really urge you to do, instead of doing that, it's not a pitch to buy any particular sauna. It's not even to force anybody to use infrared. It's to use your brain. Get inside my Facebook group. Go to Facebook. Join the certifiedsaunacommunity.com. Give us a day or two to approve your profile so we can make sure you're not a spammer or a bot. And scroll through the search bar. Use the search bar. Hybrid sauna. Traditional sauna. Infrared versus traditional. And get in there and participate. Because what I'd like to do is make everyone think. Because everyone is black and white. It's infrared or traditional. Well, guess what? Not anymore. Right? There's a blend. And everyone can have everything. You know, there's a way to add this equipment to any existing equipment that you have, and it doesn't cost a lot of money. There's a way to get the fancy sauna that you want <clears throat> with an iPad controller or a, an Android tablet or whatever and a fancy glass front and still add high heat to it. You don't have to be so dogmatic in the approach. And so this might ruffle some feathers. There could be some sauna companies who hate this because now it gives people the option to pretty much tailor any sauna experience that they want with whatever equipment that they buy. It's cheap. It's easy to do. You can DIY it. You could buy done for you kits if you want to, if you want to spend the money, of course, there's more expensive options, but I just want to get us thinking as a sauna community, as a health and wellness, as a biohacking, you know, we're all on the same journey of trying to get the best healing benefits of health equipment in our homes. And that's the main point. And that's what I'd like to extend the conversation to you with. Let me know in the comments, what you think about this, join the Facebook group, and I'll see you in there.